My name is Ukwai and in the following we will explore what it feels like to be color vision efficient. The simulation of color vision efficiencies that are colloquially better known under the collective and somewhat misleading term of color blindness might not sound like an easy task. However, it is achievable by acquiring and using the right technology, albeit with a few constraints. Color is created in context. This means that by combining the luminosities of the three individual types of color receptor cells that are present in our eyes, we gain the ability to differentiate between three otherwise nearly identically looking grayscales, at least in terms of color. This results in a useful quality of color, specifically its plasticity. By lowering the luminosity of one of the color receptor cells, the long or alternatively red cone serving as an example here, we should in theory lose the ability to see red as a color over the whole visible spectrum. As red turns so dark that it becomes almost indistinguishable from black, the remaining colors will shift into a variant of themselves, where the color red is subtracted by the reduction amount of the luminous intensity of the no weakened long red cone. This is true for all primary colors, red, green and blue. Secondary or compound colors, colors that are equal mixtures of two primary colors, are a bit more tricky. You cannot reduce the luminosity of yellow without simultaneously reducing the luminosities of red and green as we do not have a distinct type of color receptor cell specifically for light in the near yellow range. We can only lower its luminosity by lowering the luminosities of the primary colors it's composed of. The same concept applies to all the secondary colors and the colors in between. This leads us to the question on how to achieve such a reduction of the luminosity of specific colors. While we could use electronic technology like apps on our smartphone or programs on our computer to simulate each type of color vision efficiency, and these simulations are quite accurate, I think that they do not possess the same tangibility and mediated immediacy as specialized analog glasses. The key to the reduction of the luminosity of a specific color is its anti-color. An anti-color is each color's complete opposite. Let's take red once again as an example. Pure red, well, as pure as it gets on a computer screen, is neither composed of the primary color green nor blue. As the combination of green and blue is the color cyan, it consequently is red's anti-color. The same principle applies to any color of the visible light spectrum. So, to simulate red blindness, or protonopia, as it is scientifically called, you need to wear glasses that have lenses with a strong cyan tint. Wearing these glasses will not only give you a hard time seeing red, but they will also render you almost incapable of differentiating the yellow and green range, as well as the blue and magenta range from each other, as yellow is just a reddish green, and magenta only a reddish blue. Without red, these colors revert to their primary dichromatic states. In this way, we can already simulate the three most common color vision deficiencies. Protonopia, a red color deficiency, Deuteronopia, a green color deficiency, and Tritonopia, a blue color deficiency. Wearing cyan, magenta or yellow tinted glasses, or at least color tints that get as close as possible to the ideal color mixture, will reduce the luminosity of the primary colors red, green and blue. And as a secondary effect, it will compress all the colors that are created out of a combination of the reduced color and its other color part into a color singularity, leaving us with only dichromatic or two-dimensional color vision at least in theory. But these glasses merely darken a color until it's near black and only the surrounding colors shift into color singularities. Simulating monochromacy is even easier. Taking red as an example again, you only want red light to pass through the glasses into your eyes. 
glasses with red colored lenses block both green and blue light and only allow red light to pass through. Thus, for either red, green and blue monochromacy, you just need glasses with the corresponding tinted lenses. On that note, simulating a secondary color blindness like yellow blindness is impossible as you would need to reduce the luminosity of both red and green. And without a special fourth type of color receptor cell in your eyes for the yellow range, this is not strictly impossible, but almost unachievable. Simulating achromatopsia is even easier. You just need to go out at night where there's not much, mostly white light. Your color cones don't work very well in low light conditions and your rot cells start to activate. As rot cells typically do not contribute to color vision, you will see in mostly black and white, or in other words, in a dark grayscale. But, you say, why simulate color vision deficiencies? How is seeing less color any advantageous? Well, it isn't. But apart from better understanding the difficulties that color vision deficient people have to go through every day, it specifically is this quality of color, namely its plasticity, that opens up the doors to unforeseen color possibilities. If it is possible to simulate less colors, is there by implication also a way to simulate more colors or at least more perceivable color differences? Anyway, I'll leave you hanging with this cliffhanger, but exploring this question will be the topic of one of my next videos, so stay tuned and subscribe in order to fetch new ways to experience life. I'm Mukwai and I will show you how to reshape and enhance your sensory experiences because it is nothing but our senses that connect us to this world. Thanks for watching.